Live from the internet, it's the Dr. Tom the Frog Show! Hi-ho! This is Dr. Tom the Frog, and you're watching the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, uh, where we talk about role-playing games. Now, I am pretty excited that tonight we have on Brendan Conway from Magpie Games. Is that, is that right, Brendan? Yes, I do believe that is correct. Oh, fantastic. You know, that name, I finally got it right. It really crows on you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I see what you did there. That was nice. Yes, I saw what I did there, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I understand that you've got a game that's coming on Kickstarter, The Last Days of Angel Kittens. Is that right? That's close. That's close. It's actually Angle Kite, which is not exactly the same as Angel Kittens, although I'm sure that would be a great game in its own right. What does it have to do with kittens, exactly? Very little, sadly. Uh, kittens do not show up much in Last Days of Angle Kite, because Last Days of Angle Kite is a setting for Dungeon World, uh, which is set at the end of a fantasy world, and all sorts of different apocalyptic threats are barreling down and going to destroy everything that's left. And the heroes pretty much are going to have their hands full trying to do anything about it. Oh, so a Dungeon World setting, that, that sounds pretty interesting. Now, is it, um, like, systemless? Could I play OSR with it? You know, or a game where I roll more than just two six-sided dice? Yawn! <laughs> uh, you probably could if you really ached for more polyhedrals in your game. Um, polyhedrons. The, the system is written for Dungeon World, so ultimately it would still require some conversion, but... Most of the other systems that I would think it would fit with, like an OSR system, is probably uh, relatively simple enough that it would be easily adapted from Dungeon World, and I think there are some guides out there to adapt things from Dungeon World to the OSR. So that should be possible if that was uh, your goal. All right. Well, i got to get my swerve on. See, you know, I like to roll as many dice as possible. Two six-sided dice can't hold me, yo. <laughs> I mean, I, I can definitely appreciate where you're coming from. There are times when it feels like I'm not really role-playing with just two dice. Yep, yep, R-O-L-L. -L. So, um, now, I have a question about this game because it's its own setting. Now, I was wondering, do you have any, like, alternate species that you can play? Like, I don't know, perhaps you could play the legendary Battletoads? Can you play Battletoads in your game, <laughs> Brendan Conway? <laughs> Tell me if you can play Battletoads. For you, Dr. Tom, I think you could play Doc you could play Battletoads. I would let you play Battletoads in my game. Uh, one of the things I, I try to call out in the game is that it's, it takes place in uh, the Crater Basin in Anglekite, and Anglekite is the last great city, and it's sitting atop endless ruins of old civilizations. And as a result, there's just detritus and weird stuff mixed together, mongrelized uh, different uh, civilizations mixed together, uh, all of which contributes to the c capability for you to do pretty much anything. Uh, so, you know, I've played games in which people have played a walking being made of water, and I've played games where per a person played the last elf uh, remaining alive in the entire world, and somebody played like a tree person. Uh, if you wanted to play a Battletoad, I think that's well within the range of what's available in Last Days of Anglekite. That's exactly what I wanted to hear, Brendan Conway. I really appreciate that. Now, uh, if I'm interested in picking this up, is it on, uh, I don't know, Drive Through or Magpie Games website? Where can I pick this sucker up? What we're going to do is a Kickstarter uh, that should start January 13th, and after that, we'll see how that goes. Um, the book is already written. It's already laid out, uh, so pretty much we're just going to do the Kickstarter to see if we can publish that, but also the Kickstarters to see if we can do more books on top of it. Um, once we have the Kickstarter finished, we'll probably put it up somewhere on DriveThru and on the Magpie store as well. But if you want to get in early, the Kickstarter's the way to do it. All right. Well, we will put a link to that Kickstarter and uh, and make sure that anybody who is interested can can get right to that. Uh, I'll get my... Rogers, get on that. Production assistant. He's <laughs> really about worth what I pay him. Right? He's, he's pretty lazy, right? That's, that's, that's about the size of it. Oh, well, you know, I heard that you're just a, kind of like a burning cauldron of game making. What other games do you have in the mix? Well, I am primarily working on, for myself, uh, Masks. And Masks is a game about young 
teenage superheroes, and it's all about how they have to struggle with defining themselves, figuring out who they are, uh, their stats are changing to represent their different self-conceptions, and they're struggling against the adults in the world who pretty much represent forces that want to control them and make them act properly. Besides that, uh, I work for Magpie Games, as you said, so we're working on any number of other nifty projects. We're working on uh, Wicked Fate, we're working on... Uh, uh, Mark is working on Cartel, and I'm helping a little bit with that. We're going to be doing a Kickstarter for a pillion down the road a little bit. So lots of great stuff there. All right, great. All right, well, that's, that's all well and good, but I need, I have got a really serious question to ask you, Brent. Okay, getting serious. I'm, I'm focused. Uh, are you a Pepsi or a Coke man, and why? Interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. hmm. So I think that I would answer that I am a Coke man. And I believe this is because... I cannot ever get over the fact that Coca-Cola is just this perfect, like, alliterative, consonantial uh, uh, feast in my mouth. Whereas Pepsi, even if you add Pepsi-Cola, it's just, it's missing that oomph, right? So I have to go with the drink that just has the better name. I mean, that's the most important thing. Well, I, you know, I, I can understand, and more than names... Uh... It's actually healthier for you, the Coca-Cola. I'm a doctor. I'm, I'm well aware of the medical benefits of Coca-Cola. It has cocaine in it. Have you heard that? I, I have heard that. I thought they removed it, but if you're telling me as a doctor that they still have it, that's great. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. You know, Brendan, I really appreciate you coming on the Dr. Tom the Frog show. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you so much, Dr. Tom. It was my pleasure being here. You just watch the Dr. Tom the Frog show. And we hope that you liked what you saw, yo. But if it was a big waste of your time, well, it's free, so that's not a crime. But if it was a waste of your time, yes, it's free, so that's not a crime.